Welcome to the Daily Horror Habit Podcast. I'm your host, Jay Krieger, bringing you daily reviews of currently streaming horror movies for your twisted pleasure. Be aware that these reviews may include mild spoilers. And as always, I hope you enjoy. Today's review is of Rob Savage's 2020 found footage horror film, Host, which is currently streaming on Shudder. The film centers around a group of friends all suffering from COVID quarantine boredom and decided to hire a medium to perform a seance via Zoom. But naturally, this results in unforeseen consequences for them all. From the jump, Host is notable for being shot, edited, and released not only within 12 weeks, but during the COVID pandemic. Savage directed actors over Zoom, and the actors had to perform their own stunts and lighting their own sets. The film was conceptualized after Savage decided to prank his friends during a Zoom call by investigating a strange noise in his attic, only for someone hiding up there to jump out, scaring his friends on the call to death. Now, before I get into why Host is a creative and successful example of a found footage film, a brief history lesson on the subgenre is required. No subgenre divides horror fans more than found footage. From mainstream hits such as Paranormal Activity to the OG granddaddy of found footage, The Blair Witch Project, the genre has always been divisive. For those unfamiliar, found footage films traditionally are captured from the perspective of a cameraman character as their lens captures the horrific events that unfold. Ideally, the purpose of choosing this particular form of storytelling is its immersive potential, putting the audience in the shoes of those being preyed upon. The other benefit of found footage is that they're much cheaper to make than traditional films, but this unfortunately resulted in a trend of dozens and dozens of those attempting to copy paranormal activities' explosive success. But, as countless filmmakers would soon learn, cheaper does not mean better. This hard-to-swallow lesson has resulted in waves of underwhelming found footage films, often being plagued by cheap jump scares and the dreaded shaky cam, a technique where the camera shakes to resemble a character running. The more prevalent the genre became, those looking to make a real impact would learn they would have to bring a unique take on an already inherently unique genre. Like most things, found footage had to evolve to reflect the times, and it did so by utilizing modern technology such as computers. Films such as The Den, which captured footage from a laptop web camera, while the Unfriended series captured footage of a video chat room on a computer's desktop. The purpose of this long-winded found footage history lesson is to impress upon y'all just how remarkable of a feat host is, paired with being completed with all those involved separately quarantining. The logistical nightmare of coordinating this has literally twisted my brain into a pretzel. You can't help but marvel at the entire cast and crew's ambition to undertake this during not only a pandemic, but to pull it off as well as they do. As I said before, the film unfolds over the course of a Zoom call where six friends have hired a medium to perform a seance. During the course of the group's seance, Naturally, things go awry when a group member breaks the cardinal rule of being respectful to the spirits and inadvertently welcomes a less-than-friendly spirit to the group. Once the spirit arrives, all manner of hell is unleashed on the group of friends in their respective homes. The severity of these hauntings escalate from objects simply moving to creative uses of features and trends that are inherent to Zoom, such as setting their background to a video of themselves or applying filters to their face. These sound simple enough but are shockingly effective and produce two of the strongest scares of the film. One thing that kept me on the edge throughout was the unknowing nature of the types of scares Host would have. I realized I couldn't predict what types of scares outside of the usual furniture moving to expect as we didn't know how many people these actors were quarantining with in real life. So, I was unsure if a demon would physically materialize or if it would solely revolve around an invisible antagonist. And without spoiling anything, I will say, I was not disappointed in the variety of scares here. It helps that scares never stick to one style or type, which gives it a solid amount of variety that eludes a majority of found footage films. You can never say this is one note or stuffed with egregious examples of jump scares. Sure, jump scares are present, but the building of space and connection between characters is key to the host selling them. Now, as each seance member is tens, hundreds, if not thousands of miles apart from one another, it could be pretty easy for the character's bond to feel disjointed. But even here, Savage does an impeccable job of never allowing characters' connection to one another, both digitally and figuratively, to feel out of sync with one another. Meaning, it never feels as if you're watching pre-recorded visuals playing out with delayed reactions or awkward stutters and pacing. I should also mention that the film features a brisk 56-minute runtime that plays a key factor in how well the film is paced. With that limited amount of time in mind, the fact writers Gemma Hurley, Jed Shepard, and Rob Savage were able to establish host setting and character relationships before unleashing ghostly scares is a testament to how well the film is structured. Given this limited time frame to tell their story, there is a distinct lack of found footage no-nos, such as excessively shaky camera or characters screaming incoherently for minutes at a time. 
If anything, films such as Hosts serve to prove that shorter horror films can be just as, if not more, effective than those with 90-minute-plus runtimes. The performances are also of a higher quality than I'm used to seeing in found footage. Characters are distinctive enough from one another that they justify their inclusion, and the types of scares attributed to each is unique enough that they feel notable. Again, the scares themselves escalate more and more, which certainly complements Host's pacing. Also, I highly recommend watching Host in the Dark, obviously, but on a laptop with headphones. Before you discount this, hear me out. I found that this actually immersed me into the film more than I expected it to. As the film revolves around the perspective of a Zoom call, you feel very much like a silent participant, something I had not previously experienced watching other desktop horror films on my TV. Host really impressed the hell out of me. I went in very skeptical, as I generally am of found footage films. There are just too many examples of those who clearly wanted to cash in on the paranormal activity hype, mistaking simplicity for ease. Which is obviously not the case, and the idea of catching the same lightning in a bottle that Blumhouse did is very unlikely. Host never attempts to do this and is stronger for it. It's a film born out of an unfortunate circumstance that acknowledges the isolation of quarantining during COVID while never being exploitive of the pandemic. More so, the idea that this film was made during quarantine, and just how impressive it turned out in terms of acting, stunts, and lighting, makes it one of the most remarkable feats of the year. Even if you stripped away its made-in-quarantine marketing tag, this is a well-constructed, micro-budgeted film that would still stand as a strong example of simplified found-footage horror. Host is one hell of a frightening, logistic, and technically impressive horror film that's not only a shutter summer standout, but a must-watch for fans of found-footage horror. And that'll do it for another episode of Daily Horror Habit. I'll see you guys tomorrow for another Daily Horror Movie Review. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe to Daily Horror Habit on your preferred streaming service and follow at Daily Horror Habit on Instagram and at Daily Horror Pod on Twitter.